Hey, it's Jeff with Mastery Medics. Thank you so much for checking out this video. Today, we're talking about understanding cardiac output. If you uh, want to see any of our other videos or you're interested in seeing the new videos that come out every you know couple days, we would love for you to subscribe to our channel. So feel free to hit that button so you don't miss any of those videos. Let's get into cardiac output. Okay, so cardiac output is really kind of created or it is calculated by understanding or by kind of calculating the heart rate and the stroke volume. So when it comes to these two guys, heart rate's pretty self-explanatory. It's the, the chronotropy or the rate at which your heart is pumping, okay? That is essentially it. Now the stroke volume is a little bit more complicated than that. Stroke volume is going to be comprised of three particular things. Preload, okay? There's gonna be afterload, okay? And also, contractility. Okay, so those are the three big things that are going to comprise or combine to make your stroke volume. Now preload is a little bit easier to kind of understand. Preload is all about the amount of fluid that is in your ventricle prior to contraction. So the amount of fluid that's in your ventricle prior to contraction. So things like uh, atrial contraction, things like AFib, where they have poor atrial contraction, they would have decreased preload. Uh, people that have poor volume, so hypovolemia, those types of things, they would have pre, uh, poor fluid returning back to those ventricles because they have a decreased blood volume. Patients like sepsis, where they have shift of fluid outside of the blood or blood vessels into other spaces, they would have a poor fluid within their blood system or when they're within the cardiac system, which means they would have a decreased preload. Afterload is all about how much pressure it takes in order to push blood forward. So for example, any kind of back pressure on these vessels. So let's say you have a really, really, uh, a really, really poor, uh, or a pulmonary embolism, I guess, would be a great example. So we have a pulmonary embolism that is a, a embolism within the lungs themselves. What's going to happen is that that means there's going to be less blood that's going to be able to shift through the lungs, and that but we're still pumping blood in the right atrium to go to the lungs at the same rate and speed, which is a problem, obviously. But the thing what's going to happen is that when it comes to the lungs, they're going to start to slow down. They're not going to be able to maintain the amount of flow our right ventricle is giving them. What eventually happens is we put pressure on the pulmonary artery, and the pulmonary artery basically runs through this ventricle, okay, like so. And it has obviously two branches that are going to go to the two lungs. And that pressure is going to be put back on these vessels like so because not as much fluid can run through them which creates your afterload problem which means that these ventricles have to push so much harder to get blood moving forward because there's just so much blood and pressure pushing back on it that is your afterload and contractility is all about the ability to squeeze so for example if you have an mi a myocardial infarction and you are no longer you have an infarcted vest or infarcted muscle tissue okay that muscle tissue can no longer contract nearly as well as it used to and so that could create a decreased contractility and so these three things comprise of your stroke volume and whatever you find for your stroke volume uh, times your heart rate is going to give you your cardiac output within a minute okay within a minute is essentially what you're going to find with this okay so um this would be beats per minute in your heart rate okay and that gives you your cardiac output and as we find that our cardiac output decreases then we're going to find compensating factors either through the heart rate or through our stroke volume so if this decreases we'll see increases in our you know preload we'll see uh, increases in our contractility we'll see increases in our heart rate in order to compensate for decreases in our cardiac output and so on and so forth. So it's just a moving system based on what we're finding because this is going to lead to hypoperfusion and hypo, uh, basically decreases in blood pressure ultimately and eventually shock. And so that is why we see these compensating factors when we have a decrease in cardiac output. 
Hopefully that gives you a quick understanding of cardiac output. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out. More than happy to chat in the comments and we'll discuss it there. If you're interested, please feel free to join us as a Master Medics member. You can jump into a free three-day trial, see all these types of videos. There's thousands of videos that we have here. We would love to, for you to have them all and as well join us live. So you can do that as a Master Medics member, three-day free trial in the description below. See you there.